Welcome to our devotion for today. Before we begin our devotion, I just want to take a moment to thank everybody for uh, listening and abiding by what the health authorities are telling us about our distancing and that sort of thing. Uh, we're doing well, and I pray that we will continue to just listen and hear and abide by what we're being asked to do. I know the good weather is coming, and I know people are itching to get out and, and do things, but let's try and keep this virus at bay. You're going to be receiving information requests to have uh, this kind of format done midweek, where we're going to be using chats and video chats to try and keep people connected and, and feedback to one another rather than just all the information going out, having an opportunity to interact with people and to share that information. So you'll be finding out information about that uh, coming up very, very soon. Today I want to look at this whole thing called the New Covenant. We've talked about that a couple times. We talk about it at Communion, we talk about it on Good Friday, we talk about it at Easter. What is that new covenant that we speak of when Christ took the cup and said, this is a new covenant? How is it fulfilled and what does it mean to us? So I'm just going to explore that very briefly today. I want to look first at Luke chapter 22, reading verses 14 to 20. Let us hear the word of God. When the hour came, he took his place at the table and the apostles with him. He said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to them, saying, This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he did the same with the cup after supper, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is a new covenant in my blood. Amen. So we have what we're calling a new covenant except that it's not a new covenant. It's the same covenant of God and it's presented in a different way for us. It's presented in a way that impacts us differently and uh, creates a new relationship with God. If we turn to Jeremiah chapter 31 and then begin reading at verse 31, we hear this. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them. I will write it on their hearts. I will be their God. They shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me. From the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sins no more. So we have the cup. It's not a new cup. It's not a new covenant. The cup that is poured out is actually the cup of Melchizedek. Jeremiah made reference to them coming out of the land of Egypt. He's making a reference to the Passover. And in the celebration of the Passover, the last cup that is lifted of a cup of blessings is the great high priest cup, the cup of Melchizedek. And it's that covenant 
that was made at the time when Moses brought the people out of the land of Egypt. So that's the connection of the cup in our communion. It's that cup that we take, that Christ took at the Passover that he celebrated at the Last Supper with his disciples. He took that cup and he gave it a new meaning. But it was really not unexpected because it's the fulfillment of the prophecy from Jeremiah. The new covenant is God's pledge to forgive sins, the sins of his people, and to put his laws within us, to write them on our hearts. And it's to be our God, and we become his people. So Jesus Christ fulfilled that pledge on God's part through the events of Good Friday and Easter. And this new covenant is not just a possibility. It's not just something that, that could take place. This is indeed a brand new creation. The certainty of this accomplishment is in the fact that death is no more. It's in the fact that the penalty of sin has been paid by God through Jesus Christ. It also means that our sins are forgiven. And more importantly, for many people who have a sense of guilt, it means that they are remembered no more. Christ made that promise, God made that promise, that that which once separated us from God no longer exists. It's gone. It also means, this new covenant, it also means that God no longer imposes his will on us from outside onto us. But rather, we accept and experience God's will from within. Through Jesus' sacrifice, through his example, we choose to make it our own will. It becomes, as Paul says, if we have been baptized into Christ's death, we will be baptized into his life. If we accept what Christ has done, then that sense of God's purpose through Christ becomes a part of who we are and it's our will. And we live in Christ in a very real sense. We live in communion with God through this new covenant that Christ sealed in his blood. Just a thought for today. Let's unite our hearts in prayer. And let us pray. Lord, we rejoice. We rejoice in that new covenant that you have made with us. But more accurately, that covenant that you enacted, that you fulfilled through your death and resurrection. Lord, fill us. Fill us with the will of God. Fill us with the desire for God. Fill us with your life. For we pray this in your name.